Is this true that you're considering driving to Mexico just to get yes. power? Are you going to do it? Don, I called. I call, We live 15 minutes away from Mexico, and I called. I called hotels that were right there, and they're all all. They have no vacancy. No nothing. Nothing in Reynosa is available. We 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 considered. I literally told my husband. I said, "Let's just drive to Mexico, and we'll get a hotel over there." And we called before going, and there's nothing. Mm-hmm. There's nothing available over there either. I guess all the people from here have have thought the same thing and started going over there. The, the whole country has become a Woody Guthrie song. Our entire country. I mean, it's like th- th- this this Republican Party with this president, especially with the, with Donald Trump, they burned the whole thing down to the ground on their way out the door. This deregulation, uh, the refusal to accept accountability or responsibility or to do anything on the covid pandemic except lie about it the refusal to do anything on it i mean every week was infrastructure week every week they were we were going to see infrastructure every week they lied it was just a festival of freaking lies and the lie factory that is fox news i uh, just sat there and and let them do it they and and they're still doing it it's it's really sick and sad and there are no groceries there are, there's no food in texas there's there's the supplies that people had stockpiled they're spoiling in their refrigerators. I mean, if you go 80 hours without electricity, whatever you had in your refrigerator is now spoiled, okay? Uh, some people wanted to store their rations in coolers outside and it started sleeting. And, and st- you know, some people said, oh, well we'll, uh, well, we'll barbecue outside. Well, there's no meat, there's no eggs, there's no milk. They're dumping milk again. They're dumping milk, why? because they don't have the ability to deliver it and it just gets sour. I can't tell you, you know, the stories about um, the, 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 they're out of feed for the animals, literally out of feed. Um, and there's chickens and calves that have just frozen to death outside. Animal sanctuaries, the animals are dying. Some of them are dead from the, from the cold. Uh, there's no produce, fruit and vegetable crops in the Rio Grande Valley. They're calling it the Valentine's Day Produce Massacre. You know, it's funny because I'm a gardener, right? And, I, I, and and it got cold here, what, a couple weeks ago. Remember I told you, oh, it's cold. It's 52 degrees. Everybody here was freaking out. It was 52 degrees. And I started wearing long sleeve clothes and, you know, pretending it was winter here and wouldn't this be, you know. And I was actually nervous because I have a yard full of things that I plant and I grow and I love and I trim and I, you know, water and I love and I, you know, and I said, oh, if it goes down below 32, my, all my plants die. That's what happened to the entire crop of vegetables and fruit. Grapefruits, gone. There's $8 million worth of milk down the drain every day because they can't get it to a dairy. They can't get it. To, and, and even if they did, they don't have uh, the natural gas to uh, homogenize, pasteurize the milk. Food banks, no food. Their fleet, their equipment, their facilities, their operations shut down by uh, the inability to, 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 to get anybody into the food bank safely to go to work. To help. And there's no supplies. You know, like uh, food banks get surplus food from grocery stores they get it in texas they get it from heb they get it from kroger well there is no surplus food you just saw that video the shelves are completely bare they're bare and so there's no food to share with food pantries people are down to their canned goods and peanut butter and jelly that's what they're doing there and there's no water people are literally tearing their furniture apart, hacking at their furniture, axing their furniture, chopping their furniture, and trying to throw it into barbecue grills or fireplaces if they're lucky enough to have them. 80 consecutive hours now without electricity. 80 consecutive hours. Convenience stores are shut down. There's no food in the convenience stores. They can't get deliveries. Can't get deliveries. Do you see how this affects everybody? Do you understand how 
you know, you're going to go, there's no cilantro. That's right. There's no cilantro. There won't be 40 different vegetables for you. But I want to make chicken salad with dill and there's no dill. Yeah. And uh, thank God there won't be any kale. Just saying. Ew. Jessica loves it. She loves it. She puts it, she puts it in everything and she sticks it in the oven and crisps it up and eats the kale. They've been really hit badly and it's going to have a ripple effect on every single one of us. So what is the solution? The solution is the infrastructure package. It truly is the Green New Deal. That is the solution to what ails us. I mean, there are things that you could that they could have done before this, obviously. I mean, this happened in 2011 in Texas, specifically in Texas. And, you know, California, all the rolling blackouts that you saw as a result of the fires, some of the fires were caused by the uh, old infrastructure sparking, okay? There you go, just like uh, sparking down the highway, right? There were things that could be done. This power outages, these rolling blackouts, were to manage a malfunctioning grid and the failure to winterize the gas wells. You know, the the Odessa Midland is the Permian Basin, okay? That's where the oil fields are. And the oil fields, the gas wells, are frozen. Two-thirds of all the power comes from gas. And they're frozen. And the pumps that lift the gas from the ground, guess what? Need electricity to operate. No electricity, no gas. And so that cut gas field production in half. A nuclear reactor, which, you know, they have a mixture of things. Two-thirds of it, though, is, is natural gas in Texas, right? But they do have a nuclear power plant in Houston, and it had to go offline, too, because uh, their safety sensors froze. Their equipment froze. Now, you look at the Midwest, you look at New England, you look at Greenland, for God's sake, okay? You look at Norway, you look at uh, Sweden, Denmark. Okay, they know to winterize uh, their grid. Pipelines could be buried deeper into the ground to insulate against the ground surface. You could have dual fuel power plants where you switch from this to that when one is disrupted. You could have heaters on the wind turbines, which is what they do in Greenland. Yes, Greenland is powered by wind. And a lot of Nordic places are powered by wind. And the Midwest is powered by wind. And you know what? It gets very cold and windy there. But there's heaters. Heaters on the bl- to keep the blades free of ice. Sensors, valves, coolant intakes to pr- protect against uh, freezing. Like your car has any freeze in it. And they could have long distance power lines that connect to other regions. But oh no, Texas doesn't want to be regulated by interstate commerce rules. Go to RandyRoads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.